Yo, what's up guys, it's your boy Rhythm. I've gotten a lot of questions very recently about playing Assassination Rogue in 2s. It seems as if some people are having a lot of trouble not knowing what their role is and what to do in certain situations. So I figured I might as well make a quick and easy video explaining my intentions and showcasing what I do in two clips. Also, please keep in mind my audio got messed up in the clips so you won't actually hear my voice, but I'll throw in some music instead. So before I start this first clip, remember that 2v2 is almost always going to be unbalanced. There's a couple of specific comps that are just incredibly OP in only twos, and you shouldn't be so worried if you lose in twos. Now with that being said, Assassination Rogue and Disc Priest is incredibly strong right now, so I would definitely take advantage of it. In this first clip, we are facing a Resto Shaman and Affliction Warlock team. Now the first thing to note on this team is that the Warlock is almost always never the choice to go on, especially in twos. Instead, we choose to go on the Resto Shaman because it's a lot easier to stick on a Resto Shaman and lock him out of his heals. So first things first, I try and go for a sap on the Warlock, but since the Warlock is one of the few classes that has a pet, he's automatically in combat. In this case, it's best to just garrote both targets since they are close to each other and since you can use stealth abilities for a couple of seconds when you leave stealth. So since I'm trying to build up as much burst as possible, I also throw my first rupture on the warlock, even though he's not my kill target, just so I can build my energy region. I then get feared at this point, but I'm accidentally playing relentless, so I can't trink it. Now at this point, Amario, my priest, fears both the shaman and the warlock, and I can shadow step, but I choose to just walk up because I want to try and get a re-stealth as well as only use my shadow step for emergencies. Sure enough, I get another stealth so I apply another silence garrote to the shaman. Now as you can see, always pay close attention for counter strike totem when facing wrestle shamans as it can kill you very quickly if you don't watch. So I see the totem and I white hit it to get rid of it before I start actually bursting the shaman. I then at this point get a full kidney shot on the Resto Shaman which he trinkets but I also apply Vendetta and Exsanguinate and even my artifact weapon to start bursting the Shaman. Amario then mind controls the Warlock off the bridge so that he can't get his Spirit Link in case of emergencies as well. So we pretty much have it in the bag here. Now this is a really good example to show you a simple rotation as an assassination rogue in twos. Now keep in mind, you will almost always train the healer since it will always allow your disc priest to help with damage. Alright guys, so on this second clip, sorry for the really quick matches, but this is the perfect example of how much your actual teammate, the Disc Priest, should be helping you in damage. What I mean by this is, when we killed the Resto Druid, my Priest was spamming a lot of damage as well, which is how we bursted him so quickly. So in this clip, we're facing a Resto Druid and an Enhanced Shaman, which can be pretty tough sometimes because the Enhanced Shaman can do a ton of burst damage if you let him. Now since I don't really care much for looking for the Druid, I immediately open up on the Enhanced Shaman with a Garrote and a 5 point Rupture. Now after I land my full bleeds on the Enhanced Shaman, I immediately Shadow Step the Resto Druid because he's in range and I begin to apply my dots to him as well. 
also if you pay really close attention i'm really trying to stay as close as i can to the wall to minimize the shaman from leaping to me this is something very minimal but it's all about those small things adding up to make that victory now mario comes in at the perfect time for a perfect double fear and this allows him to set up for a lot of extra damage now, as soon as the fear falls off i throw a full kidney shot on the druid while popping vendetta and exang now for some reason he didn't decide to trinket at all which could have possibly saved his life but i still have no clue why not this rush priest So in this last clip, this one is a little bit longer, but it showcases one of those matches where it's like a DPS race, which is how much of your 2v2s as an assassination rogue will go. It's all about not being faked out with your kick and lining up your kidney shot with all of your damage in order to win. One key thing to remember is, if you apply bleeds to the off target with your poisons as well, you'll gain a lot more energy than normal which is why you see me in some cases putting bleeds on the rogue. Immediately with this clip, we have an advantage because I sap the rogue out of stealth and open up on the priest. Now since I had a really clean open, I should have popped Vendetta right off the bat, but I instead saved it for a little bit later. Amario mistimes his fear just a little bit right here and it ends up me getting stunned for a second. Either way, I end up throwing my bleeds, like I said, on the rogue to build up my energy regen. Now at this point, there really isn't much to explain other than paying attention to keeping up your bleeds while throwing your extra combo points into an Envenom. It's like playing a mind game if you can get your kick off or if he can fake you. Now if you get your kick off, you immediately have a huge advantage, so try not to get faked as much as possible. There's really two ways to practicing this, and you can either kick very early, which is not really recommended unless you're about to kill the target, or kicking very late to avoid getting faked out. The reason you want to kick very late is because sometimes the healer will try to fake you out, and if you don't kick and you don't buy into his little games, you can actually make him waste more time just trying to fake you out. Now in this case, he starts to cast his shadow men and I thought I kicked him, but I must have just missed by a hair. Either way, I have so much pressure on the priest, we're at a really good spot in this match. Amario gets a really good fear, so I end up vanishing and cheap shotting the rogue to peel just a little bit since they're nearby, and also putting my bleeds once again on the rogue. I then immediately head over back to the priest and I put a garrote on him instead just to silence any heals. Anyways, that's going to be the end of this video. Hopefully I shed some light on you guys having trouble playing Assassination at the moment, as it can be somewhat difficult at times. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace!